Today, I'm going to show you how to handle sinking funds in Monarch Money. Hey there, I'm Brittany Flammer, a financial coach with videos all about budgeting and money saving tips for you and your family. Sinking funds are just for irregular expenses, things that you do not pay for monthly. A classic example would be holidays. Let's take Christmas. If you wait until December to budget for Christmas, it will mess up your budget for the month of December. So instead, what I like to do is to set a little bit of money aside each month throughout the year so that when December rolls around, I've already got money budgeted for Christmas. There are so many possible sinking funds you could do if you pay your life insurance annually or if your car insurance is paid every six months or maybe vacation is a common one, kids extracurriculars. There are so many possibilities for sinking funds. Everyone's going to look a little bit different, but I'm gonna show you how to handle them, whatever ones you use. At the beginning of the year, I like to do our annual budget plan for the year, and I come up with our sinking funds. You can check out a video where I share our sinking funds, how I work them, how much I put into them each month, but it's okay if it's not January 1st, you can start today, wherever you are, this is how you can do it. You can use pen, paper, or use a spreadsheet, whatever works for you. I like a spreadsheet and that's easy to share my screen. So I'm gonna do a spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet, I have just a list of possible sinking funds. You might have more, you might have less. They might not all apply to you. These are just some generic ones. So for example, maybe you wanna do holidays and combine Christmas and birthdays, or maybe birthdays and anniversary could go into gifts. Um, it's whatever makes the most sense for you. And if you don't need the category, the sinking fund, then don't use it. Um, but I just go through this, type in all of my sinking funds, and then look at each month and just put how much I think I will need that much for things. So for example, car maintenance, I know I'm gonna need an oil change every couple of months. Um, registration for all of our cars is in spring. It'll probably be about $300. So I'll put that in March. Um, and then in fact, I think I'll combine car maintenance and car registration into one. Uh, house maintenance, I pay for the lawn spray in the spring, that's around $300. And then throughout the summer, we buy some yard stuff. It is not perfect. Just do your best guess. If you wanna get more accurate, look back at last year's numbers, but just your best guess is a good place to start. I go through and do that for every single sinking fund. And then I get a total for the year for each fund. Now what I do with that total is I divide it by 12 to know how much I need to set aside each month. So in this example, um, let's look at car. I need $600 for the year for our car maintenance. So I'm gonna divide that by 12. That means, because there are 12 months in a year, that means I need to put away $50 each month for car in order to have the money when it's time to pay for things. That's how I figure out how much I need in our sinking funds. Um, that works no matter what budgeting system app you're using, but now I'll show you how to put it into Monarch. I like to put our sinking funds in a separate savings account so they're not in our checking account. I highly recommend online savings, high yield savings accounts because they are out of your checking account so you don't see them, think you have lots of money. They are earning some interest right now, rates are four to five percent and you can still link them to your account so you can access them relatively easy within just a couple days. If you want recommendations, here's a video with some of my favorites. I'll have that playing at the end. Okay, in Monarch Money, you can see here, I have a group for our savings or for our sinking funds. So what I'm going to do is make sure I have a category for each sinking fund that was on my list. And what I wanna do is open up a category and turn on the rollover. So where it says rollover, you click it to toggle it on. And if you already have money in the account, put in the starting balance, how much you already have in it. If you don't have anything, then just set zero, that's fine. Um, now I'll speed through and do this for all of my accounts. Now in Monarch Money, the budgeted amount is how much you plan to put into that sinking fund for the month. The actual is how much you actually spent this month. 
and the remaining is how much you have left to spend. So if you see that little arrow with the circle, that means it's a rollover. So that means whatever money is left at the end of March will be rolled over to April and every month until you turn it off. If you click on it, it's going to show you how much you started with, how much was rolled over, how much all it'll give you more details. When you spend money in this category, it will, you'll pull it out of that category. So here is an example. Um, for travel, I have 275 budgeted each month for travel and it is rolling over. So if we click on it, we can see how much has actually been spent in travel this month. But let me go ahead and add a transaction for you. Um, we'll go to transactions, add one. I'm going to add, let's say I made a reservation for an Airbnb for the summer. Let's well, say I spent 75 for that reservation. I'm going to add that transaction. Now, normally this would automatically be imported, but for the sake of the video, I'm manually entering it to show you. Now, if we go back to our budget, you can see the actual is higher, but I am still in the green because I have money in my account. If you toggle on the rollover, it will automatically roll over from month to month, and it doesn't have to be in its own group. I like to have all my sinking funds in one group together, but you don't have to. Any category you can turn to roll over. This money rolls over, so you can see how much you have to spend. But if you are actually create, if you have your sinking funds going to a separate account, then you will have to actually transfer that money to a separate account. Otherwise, it will just sit in your checking account and it will accumulate. So if you're really disciplined, you could leave it in your checking account and not look at the balance because most people, they look at the balance and see they have a huge balance in their checking account. They want to spend it. And then when it comes time to pay for that vacation, the money won't be there. That's why I recommend moving it into a separate savings account so that it's not in your checking account, can't be spent. So whatever the budgeted amount you have for the month for a sinking fund is how much you would actually transfer out of your checking account into your savings account. And then when you swipe up your card to pay for something, that will get categorized and come up under the actual. And what's remaining is how much is left. So if you move your money out of your checking into a savings account and then you pay for something, then at some point you will have to transfer the money from your savings back into your checking to pick, cover the bill, if that makes sense. The one major downfall of this is when you move money out of your account, it won't, it's going to savings, but it won't, it will track as an expense in your cash flow sheet. So just be aware of that. If you want to see how I set up my budget with Monarch or how I automate it, check out these videos. Otherwise, make sure you're subscribed, hit the bell so you get notified with my next video coming about all about how to handle your goals and paying off credit card. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.